Um, I hope you're with us and joining us, and welcome to Making Fetch Happen. Yeah, episode three. Woo, woo. <laughs> yeah. Somehow, even though we keep having these fucking difficulties, we're on episode three, so that's good. <laughs> we are, and by episode 25, we should have it all figured out. <laughs> I freaking hope so, because you know what? Nobody's getting any of our money <laughs> to pay for these goddamn streams until it's perfect. Damn it. <laughs> anyway, so I'm super stoked to be here. I'm sorry we're a half hour late. Um, and we're kind of a daily and a dollar short. I do want to skip ahead to Men Crush Monday. I know. <laughs> ever want to do that yeah i know and right. i'm over here like but it's not on the list that way all right so it's a lead-in though okay okay here's the lead-in i'll I allow it my <laughs> yeah that's i'm not sure okay it's a lead-in but we could have just said that and then let your man crush monday happen man after crush monday is john snow as always <laughs> as our lady piece just fucking blasted her mouth. Um, <laughs> but I think I met a real guy. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to, I'm over here reserving judgment because I don't believe any of them are left, but I hope that this is true. I always hope that it is true. I mean, always. It might not be. I don't know, but I'm kind of color me impressed. Um, okay, well, you know what? This doesn't even have to go to Man Crush Monday. We can just start in on your buttered muffin and how that happened. How did he butter your muffin? He butters my muffin very well. I freaking love saying that, by the way. Like, I can't stop loving it. Yeah, like, I, I you know, I think I, I don't know. It's only been a few weeks, so, like, who the fuck knows? I mean, anything can change. Yeah. I, uh, I mean, we've both been in relationships where you're with somebody for like four years and then all of a sudden the devil comes out and you're like, where the fuck were you four years ago? So I could have just missed this whole shit. Well, <laughs> so that's the story of my life. Like, was yeah. five years of a good relationship and then three years of the worst relationship that I've ever actually had in my fucking life. Yeah. But... Yeah. Do you have a pattern? I was talking to my mom about pattern. Do you have a pattern? Like, is five years a pattern for you? Because no, for me, four no, no, and a half no, years. Eight years is a pattern for me. Uh, yeah. Mine is four oh. and a half. Every long relationship I've been in, four and a half years in, you're done. If you are a piece of shit, I can only last four and a half years with garbage. So I just feel like after like four years becomes the, oh my God, what the fuck am I doing? We should try to make this work because holy crap it's been four years yeah five years whatever it is but uh yeah no i i don't know i kind of met somebody i kind of like him we'll see cool. how it goes he's probably yeah. watching now and is gonna break up with me hey not tinder because we're not gonna say bad things and it's no. nice that you deleted tinder like everybody likes to hear that when you're dating somebody to hear that they like are not looking for anybody else and you know on the sly or anything like that yeah like, i just i felt all right well we discussed last week i wanted to delete the tinder and like the bundle and everything else that was with online dating and well this may not I didn't even mean to use that word. Love is the gross word. But, um, but it, you know. Well, well, what do you call it? Like a like story? Like people don't like, understand. This might, this might be my romantic comedy. So I don't want to use the Tinder word. But like, how did you guys meet Tinder? That's a fucking fantastic story. Yeah. Are you covering your microphone a little bit? No, I didn't think I was. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now I can hear you. <laughs> It's a little muffled. <laughs> anyway, so tell me about buttering the muffins. Well, okay. We had so, a topic. I straight, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, it's fine. Because we could totally lead in. And, like, I think, I don't know, maybe at the beginning we can, like, kind of talk about what's going on with us, like, in the past week. Because, you know, not just jumping into the segments sometimes is cool. But um, 
I thought like talking because like again, nobody's buttering my muffin. I am not allowing mu butter near my muffin. <laughs> I don't want anybody to butter my muffin right now. Right now I have, I'm on a journey of, Your are yeah, like I'm, I'm on self mode. I don't, I, I get distracted. So I cannot right now, right now it's so important for me to do the things that I got to do. I cannot have that distraction and I don't want it. I don't have the energy for it. I have the energy to work and take care of my kid and do shit for myself right now. So anyway, but I was thinking, I was like, you know, kind of inspired by you feeling the way that you feel and being like, well, how did this happen? Because we always talk about the shitty people who are I trying know. to butter them up. And so like, maybe we can give these men out there or women, I mean, whoever else, whoever's trying to date somebody, some ideas of what actually makes people feel good, especially on these dating apps, because I feel like maybe people are, some people are it unintentionally creepy, I think. A lot of people are intentionally creepy. They are unintentionally and intentionally creepy. Right. I so, like, maybe we can give them tips. Maybe we can be a good guide. Like, here's how to butter my muffin. If you'd like to butter my muffin, <laughs> here's how to get in on that. <laughs> so, okay. So, for me, for, with him, it was... Um, I don't know, like this poor bastard. I like, I, I mean, I, I. Where you at? I can't see you. I don't know why I use that accent. I've been using accents with my kid all day. And, uh, oh, here we go. We're going we're gonna to bring you back. Yeah, I'm back. Yeah, I'm back. Okay. <laughs> I am back. <laughs> fuck. Jesus, fuck. All right. Yeah, I'm religious, clearly. Um, so for me, like, buttering my muffin is really quite simple. Like, I'm not as complex as I think that men make women out to be. Um, for me, it was definitely, um, like, the making the effort, the saying the things that I needed to hear, and... Not just because he was saying them, but because I really enjoy him and I, I like him. It helps that he's super fucking hot. <laughs> yeah. As Regina would say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell Aaron he looks sexy with his hair pushed back. <laughs> <laughs> it does help that he's super sexy. Um. But no, like, he's, like, a really nice guy, and he's humble, and he's down to earth. And there's... Oh, my... Oh, where you at? Vanessa, I'm going to kill this fucking app. What's I'm happening? Gonna kill it. I'm gonna kill it um, How are you no. going away? Okay. He's super sweet. And by next week, I might not think so. I mean, he might become a douchebag overnight. I don't really know. I'm yeah, a bad character, clearly, <laughs> given my bad relationships. But right now, I'm really, like, happy. I'm happy. Yeah. So Just enjoy it. I am. I'm going to do that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I feel like, I mean, of course, you want to, like, look out for red flags and not get yourself into a shit relationship and all that kind of stuff. But, like, there's no sense in overanalyzing something that isn't really solid yet anyway like you're you're in the getting to know each other phase so get to know each other enjoy it so i'm happy i'm doing all right um nice. my my muffin is being buttered fantastic well um <laughs> sweet <laughs> i know it's tmi but, I mean, I just, uh, yeah. the way that I think about it is that like, like what you're saying is awesome and it's exactly what we want. You know, like we want people to say sweet things to us or to say normal things to us or to just kind of get to know us and ask questions about who we are. But what happens? Like, then we have these creepos who will go <laughs> and that. They, they will go and like do all those things. And they're not really interested. So, like, I feel like the best advice to give is, like, if you are not interested in a person, if you do not want to get to know that person, don't oh my God. message. Don't do it. Don't. Right. Like, yeah. No, I agree. So, here's the thing. Like, I actually believe him. 
and talk to me in a week and I'll let you know if I feel the same. But I do actually believe him when he says nice things to me. Like, it's really nice waking up to hey, gorgeous, every morning because I can tell you from past experience that, like, most guys don't really do that. Like, they don't. You know what I mean? Like, they don't make the extra effort. They don't message you all day long. They don't make it a point to come and see you. And he does. And it's it's nice. It's very nice. And right. it's a change of pace. So I'm sorry to not be the cynical cunt that you all know. But... <laughs> Meanwhile, it's passed on to me because I'm like, I've known guys like that and they were shitty. <laughs> Which again, like we've talked about a million times, I, I don't necessarily put that label on everyone. I do try to just be like, like I have my little side eye over here, but I don't show it to the world. Cause I'm like, you know, there are good guys out there and I do get that. And you know, my experience of that has been that, you know, Oh, Hey gorgeous. Hey, whatever. And then, you know, oh, fucking see, I, don't Twitter, get I can't get a text back. And I'm like, what is wrong with you, dude? Like, where'd you go? I thought I was wonderful. I thought I was the 10. I thought I was this, that, and the other, the kind of woman that you want to be with. And and, and now, ooh, three months later, we're done with it. Totally honest with you. I normally get the, hey, girl, want to fuck kind of guys. It's true. You know it's true. I know, but that's so shitty. Well, I mean... Yes and no. Because, God, like I would never even been quite blunt. Listen, I've been quite blunt about using guys for sex too. So of course, if it's mutual, that's different, right? So, like you know, it's different getting the nice things. You know, I'll take it. And again, even if even if it only lasts for three months and it's a wonderful three months, and then it doesn't work out, you had a great three months. Like that's all that matters. Um, I dude, what's going on here? <laughs> I just dropped my phone. Um, we gotta get your phone in, girl. <laughs> I don't know why we can't just like film things and not have it go awry. I'm just so listen. Nervous. I'm knocking on wood right now because it's going really good. Other than you dropping the phone, I feel like we're doing okay. <laughs> yeah. So I mean. Yeah, I'm trying not to change the basis of who I am, which is I like to have sex, but I really do kind of want to meet somebody. And um, if it's okay to be it's different, okay, and I'm glad if it is him, you know what I mean. Listen, if you want to turn into a fucking Cinderella princess and decide that that's what you want, like I don't care. And and anybody who's gonna judge you for that is like a shit bag. Like I feel like. Like in the last couple of weeks, I've been thinking about that, like about how I am not easy to understand, like because I'm into so many things and I'm in and out of, you know, I love this and I love that or I love something now. And then three months later, it's something else that's shiny and new. And like, I don't care anymore. Like, I don't care. I'm this is my life. And if I'm following my bliss. Well, so that's totally I, how I feel. Else. I, I feel like I've had enough heart not even heartache, like just, you know, like bullshit in my life. So, you know what? I'm enjoying what's happening right now. Yeah. And I hope that you keep and that. I hope like, he's not watching this. I, I hope he is. Hope he's Perfect. not watching this. Sir, understand that there is an expectation to be met. Meet it. <laughs> <laughs> I can hop in my minivan and I'm still a badass in my minivan <laughs> and make trips if I have to. <laughs> you and your minivan are badass. It it has a room that, that opens the trunk. So like, you know, you're ahead of the game already, babe. Yeah. I freaking love, love it. my minivan. Love it. Anywho. Right. Anywho. So, let's, let's stir the pot. Let, oh, all right, you stir the pot first, because I always stir the pot. I know, but I wasn't prepared because you said you had something to stir the pot. Okay. And I'm just going to stir with really you. Curly. Like, this I'm just is... going to put my spoon in your pot. All right, so I'm going to stir the pot with my cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> Here's me stirring the pot. Okay, so I saw a meme the other day that a girl posted 
um, from my Instagram. And it said, like, it was basically about dudes who couldn't be monogamous and how fuck them. And here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to stick up for you dudes for once in my entire life as a feminist. And I'm going to say this. Not everybody is meant to fucking be monogamous. Like, we need to bash the stereotype Mm -hmm. that we all want one partner for the rest of our lives. I don't know that I want one partner for the rest of my lives. Like, (laughs) how many lives you got? Yes. You know I wasn't going to let that fly. (laughs) My life. Um, I really don't know that I want that. So I just want to say this. It's okay to not want (laughs) one dude (laughs) or one chick or one dude and one chick. Um, It really is okay. And there's no big deal about that. But the thing that I have a problem with is honesty. So, if you do not want to be with one person for the rest of your existence, it's okay, but admit that to the person who thinks that they might want that. Yeah. I agree. So, I just would like to say this. I don't play well with others. So, I am a compulsive monogamous chick. Like, in terms of when I'm in a relationship that I'm committed to, I want one person. And it's okay to not want that, but just be honest about it. Yeah. Is and that I feel wrong? Like, I don't think it's wrong. And I totally understand it too, because I, I actually remember meeting my ex's cousin and she showed up for brunch with her boyfriend and her girlfriend and they're all like it's polyamory, you know, whatever. And I, it took me a minute. It took me a minute because I was like, I don't understand what's happening. What is actually happening here? And then I understood it, and I was like, you know what? To me, good for them. Yeah, I don't play well with others either. Not sure I can handle that. However, yeah, I definitely. However, can when I was a teenager, and I thought about getting married. I didn't want to get married. I never wanted to be married in my life. I always wanted to be a mom. I just, I don't know what it is about marriage. My parents are married. I don't know why I feel. It is the institution of death. I know. But like at the same time, I did it. You did it. Like we did it. (laughs) I did it. It worked out really well, as you can see. (laughs) Exactly. But still, okay. So I said to myself, the perfect relationship for me would be to find a gay man marry him and have have an open marriage and have an open marriage of some sort. Of course, complications would come in if one falls in love or the other, but we could raise children together and it would be a beautiful home because half the shit we would fight about wouldn't be there. Wouldn't be relevant. We're not having sex or not having sex. (laughs) It it literally wouldn't be relevant because there is no jealousy factor. There is no (laughs) anything. All right, well, exactly. I am jealous by nature. I want to be the only one, you know what I mean? I totally am. I'm the same way. So, I mean, for, like, again, like, all right, so men find out I'm bisexual, right? And, like, one of the first questions I get is, eh, do you want to bring another girl into the bedroom? And I'm like, done. <laughs> like, we're done here. No, I don't. I really just want to fuck you. If I want to be with a chick, I'm going to be with a chick. If... Yeah. Oh my god. There is <laughs> massive comments coming on on my Instagram right now that are so gross. I'm sorry. I got completely distracted. Wow, you got totally sidetracked. Super easy by that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, anywho, <laughs> talk to him. I'm right pretty jealous too. Years ago, so I mean, that I'm pretty jealous too. No, I do not want to fuck. Thank you. Oh my gosh! Person Listen, I'm we're not answering your Instagram questions right now. 
Stop I'm looking not, at the I'm list. not answering any questions. Uh, so listen, I'm with you. I'm I'm kind of jealous. I'm kind of jealous, but I think it's it's like when I think about it, it's not the normal jealousy. Like I feel like there's been jealousy in my life that had to do with my own self-esteem where I felt like, oh, if you thought another girl Let's was cut pretty, the shit. Sorry. No, seriously. No, listen. There was a time where I thought, like, you know, if you if you thought another girl was pretty, that was a slight against me. I've learned that that's fucking bullshit because I'm like in love with Jason Momoa, and anybody that I would ever be with in my life needs to know that I'll be in love with Jason Momoa for the rest of my life. But I'm not gonna fuck Jason Momoa, not just because he's married and isn't gonna fuck me, but I'm not gonna do it. And I feel like the reason is because if I'm with somebody, that person has to be enough for me or I'm going to have to leave. Because if I am not fulfilled in a relationship, I shouldn't be in it. That's how I feel. Well, so if you're with me, if you're with me and my vagina is not enough for you, if my vagina doesn't work for you, we shouldn't be together because that's part of you. Like that's an integral in my relationship with you. That intimacy has to be in the relationship. So if you need to be banging other girls, I don't think I'm going to be down for it, but you may find somebody who is. So go on, go on, go forth and find your polyamory dream, but it is not with me. It, I'm yeah, not your it's not with I'm me either. Good. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. all right. So we've talked about our muffins being butter. Yes. And oh Sean is very God. excited about our butter muffins. <laughs> Stop with the shout outs. I see your fucking shit coming up on Instagram. Cut the crap. Oh, they're not, you're totally antagonizing them, which is cool. <laughs> All right. So anyway, Man Crush Monday. It's Tuesday. I don't give a fuck. You did. It's did, Tuesday. You did, okay. It's, All right. Yeah. Man Crush Monday. Man Crush Monday. God, this wine is good. Um, I'm drinking like Long Island iced tea, so my drink is extra special. I am so old that when I hear you say Long Island iced tea, I think of the movie, the the TV show Night Court. <laughs> Do you remember Night Court? <laughs> yes, I remember Night Court. <laughs> and the blonde chick, I can't remember Christine. Oh my god, the, 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 the like you know the one that was like you know in the police uniform with the really bad mullet. Yes. Christine, frosted. what's her name? Christine, it was a frosted mullet. I wish I remembered yes. her name. She they took her out one night and gave her Long Island iced teas and told her it was Long Island iced tea. And so, when I hear that, still to this day, I hear her going Long Island iced tea. <laughs> I was a bartender for way too many years of my life. I don't want to age myself, but I'm fucking old. Um, but like Long Island iced teas have made like you know strides, like they're at one. Ew, he just told me I was boring. Russ. Oh my god, stop paying attention to the haters, bro, and talk. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> what was her name? I kind of, like, remember her name, too. Christine, Christine something. Marquis? Mar Wait a minute. Yes, it's Marquis something. something. Mark, Mark, Marquis. Marky is the last name, right? I don't know. I think it might be her first name. I don't remember. I feel a thousand years old. I'm going to Google it while anyway, you're talking. Anyway, Google while we're watching. Um, oh, my God. I'll find it. So, anyway, Long Island iced tea. If you're drinking Long Island iced tea. <laughs> I, I don't know. My train of thought is completely fucked. Marky Post. Talking about her name was Marky no. Post. Marky Post, you're so good. I'm so happy. Yes, I win. Job. Yes. That was some good brain work. I awesome. have no idea. I'm drinking Long Island iced tea. So, Long Island. Um, Long Island iced tea. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna. I'm done. I'm, done. I'm gonna fucking kill this guy. Stop messaging. Okay. Anyway, did you did you do your man crush Monday or did I cut you um, off and make you should do your yours first? Do yours first. Listen, mine's, mine's lame. It's not a real person again. They're not a real person in my life. I don't have, I'm never going to have a man crush Monday that I have in my life. Well, I told you mine's Jon Snow forever and ever and for all of these well, I just burped on camera. <laughs> I just want everybody to know wow, what they're doing when they like, you know, 
You're totally pixelated. You look so creepy. I can't take it. It needs to stop. I look oh creepy? God. Yes. I'm going to take a picture of it. No, stop. Oh, it's going to go away by the time I get to do it. No, nope. on. better, better, better. You look like you should be in The Walking Dead, which is a little cool. It's a little cool. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, my man crush Monday. Whoa, and here she is. <laughs> So, uh, a couple weeks ago, I watched Slapshot. I made Will watch Slapshot is what happened because oh, it's my God. favorite hockey movie. And we're a uh, hockey movie, not you. Yes, I know, right? What? So between me and his friend, we're supposed to be making him into a hockey fan because hockey's the greatest. So I'm like, you need to sit down. You need to watch this movie because this is, if you're a hockey player, this is the movie. Like Miracle is great, but Slapshot is the shit. <laughs> the reason I love Slapshot, Paul Newman. Oh my God. Did you know that he has a son? I'm not sure that I knew that. I'm going to <sighs> tell you that he has I a really son. He was in a Nicholas Sparks movie, and he is so fucking hot. I think I'm thinking of the wrong person. Paul was a beautiful 80-year-old. Like, it was creepy and weird. I was like, why are you still beautiful? Weird. Well, because old hot guys are still beautiful. So yeah, if you're I mean, watching this show, Royal Pains, I don't know if you've ever heard of it. It was on USA, I think, or FX. I don't fucking know. I think it maybe was on FX, but Royal Pains. Royal? Royal Pains. Oh, okay, no. I only know the Royals because my ex used to watch that garbage. No, no, no. Royal Pains. And they're the dude from Road Trip that is got like gorgeous blue eyes and dark hair. And he's the biggest like kind of nerdy guy. Not the biggest nerdy the guy. guy. The no, weed guy? Not, not not the ugly guy from Supernatural. Like the really cute. His name is Paolo Costanza. So maybe that's my man crush Monday. Yeah, look it up. He's super hot. With the Google. <laughs> <laughs> and now I lost my train of thought because I thought of Paolo Costanza. He's super and I'm like cute. George Costanza because I'm a dork. Stop yeah, telling me guy. about a camera it's angle. Stop telling me about a camera angle. What do you want? What do you want? Hello. So annoying. Uh yeah, no, that's the weed guy. He was the weed guy. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I think he's so hot. He's, he's very cute. He's yes. So cute. Yeah. He has like the side top thing, like what my mouth is doing right now. Yeah, he, yeah, he does. So like, cute. Like, yeah. yeah, and he's got really pretty blue eyes and dark hair, so I'm yeah. a big fan of that. But nice, I like that. See, we 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 managed to make that happen. But we I also love Paul Monday like happened. that wasn't see, a real person. I love Paul Newman. Even Russ, though you're welcome. Stop it. Cut it out. Paul Newman was hot. Okay, and he's hot. Like cat on a hot tin roof. He's a He's a total asshole in that movie, but I watch it and I'm just like, I would totally put up with his abuse because I have been stupid, but look how hot he is. Like, that's how she ended up in this situation because he's so beautiful. Like, you just look at him and you're just like, why can't you be better? Can you just be better? But anyway, <laughs> aside from his beauty, he was a good human being. Like, he this man ever was like, was, yeah. let me make food. Let me make food and then like, um, well, operate co operating costs goes here and then just donate the rest. I don't need to make money off of this. I just want to be good to people. And I'm like, could you like make yourself more Can, wonderful? I know. Can you clone the 2020 version of that? I know. Yeah. I think his son may be our age, so it's fine. <laughs> Going to the Google machine. <laughs> Yeah, he's super sweet. Good. Okay. So that, that'll give me a new, uh, a new, <laughs> a new person to crush on. He'll be my man crush on next week because I'm going to stalk the shit out of him for a week. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> but so let's, I guess maybe we can. All right. Oh, let's okay. move on Look, I mean, just Olympic. hold on. I need to show about? you this. I need to do this. Like, I hope everybody can see it. Look at that studly man. Mm. Oh, God. Yep. There he is. Whoa. Ah. Oh. All right. So you're going to see me pause for one second. Where are you going? Just please pause because I have to deal with the situation. Okay. So I'm going to have to like talk to myself? No. For like 30 seconds. Live show, y'all. Here we go. <laughs> Whoever's watching, I hope you enjoy me not Googling uh, Paul Newman's son while we wait for a page to come back. I feel like I should play some Jeopardy music or something. Um, and I'm feeling incredibly blessed that our broadcast has only been like fucked up because of like, maybe she drops the phone. We've every week had so many difficulties doing this that like I'm in miracle land that we can even get our sentences out. Okay. Look, you're back. And now I can't hear you, bro. Bro. I called you bro. Oh, we are not going to be able to... And she's gone. <laughs> oh, man. How people who do live TV don't drink is beyond me. Or maybe they do. Maybe that's what's in their little cups. Because I don't know. This would stress me out. Not that I'm like... I've had a glass of wine. Okay, hi, I'm back. But that was very stressful because I'm on my phone. And normally I can, like, you know put that up to my computer and make y'all laugh, but that wasn't funny. Okay. It didn't stop going off. Oh, I see. Anyway. So we need to get you a tablet. Maybe we need to get you a tablet so you can do this and then like nothing beyond the tablet. I think I need to like desimplify my fucking life. I could send you my shit old phone. And then you just don't have to do anything. It's cracked. I mean, the screen is cracked. Oh, and you're gone again. Why? Why? Why is this happening? I'm trying to find solutions. Anywho, when she gets back, we're going to burn book. And the burn book is good this week. Like, I came up with it, and I'm pretty excited about it. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Vanessa, and I am a counselor. Believe it or not, uh, I swear a lot. I am... Uh, pretty candid, but that's what makes me an awesome counselor. That's why people like coming to me because I am not Dr. Freud. Um, and so I enjoy doing this because it lets me let loose a little bit more. I mean, if you come into the office, you're going to get probably this version of me with less cursing um, because I like to be real. You're a real person. I'm a real person. Uh, I don't feel like I should treat you any differently. So that little aside, I'm wondering where Paige is because I don't know what else to say. Uh, uh, <laughs> dang, she's gone, gone. Oh, here she goes. Okay, I'm going to pop her back in. <laughs> you got to stop doing this to me, man. <laughs> uh, it's the kind of not my fault. I don't know. My phone keeps freezing up. And if people would stop fucking messaging me on Instagram. That's what they're going to do because they're watching. Like, this is what I'm saying. Like, I need to get a separate device. Like, I have this phone, like, and it's cracked. The screen is cracked, but the camera's fine. My so you could at you could least. Right, but listen. Listen to me. I've been doing voices today with Scarlett like all day, and so I had to do that then. And I'm sorry. I feel like it's appropriate because I'm like four, so it's fine. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> the point of giving you that phone is so that it can be independent of everything else. So the only thing you would do on it would be this. So you're not going to get notifications of anything. Like it literally will do nothing else. So you I can have your phone. To do nothing else. It's right. Really and obnoxious. It's literally just sitting there because I cracked the fucking screen playing mini golf because I didn't have a goddamn cover on it because I'm an asshole. And <laughs> so it's just sitting over there. So I'll just send it to you and then you can do that. You'll have your phone separate. 
I'm just gonna send you all of my electronic devices that I don't use and between That sounds like a pretty fucking good idea at this point. I, I, I can't even argue that. All right, so what are we talking about now? Let's- uh... All right, burn book. Cause when you were gone, I got really nervous and I told everybody that I was a therapist and that I was a cool therapist. Like I got- really <laughs> You're a cool therapist. I'm not like a regular mom. I'm like a cool mom. Jed. But it's true because people are totally like, you're a counselor? Like, you don't act like oh Dr. God, Freud. Like, yeah. ever. I'm like, not like Dr. Freud. I don't like to be a stuffy asshole. I like to be real. So, listen, hold on. I'm lighting a cigarette. Okay. <laughs> and we're, best how, appropriate, how appropriate for the burn book. All right. Let's burn it down. Burn it down. All right. So this you're is, gonna start this one. You decided okay. the topic, so you're you're doing it. And I'm getting all like in the mode, doing my head wag. So, and this this I talk about in my counseling a lot. So it's not something like if anybody's ever watched my counseling videos or spoken to me, really, this is not gonna be a shock to you. But it's perfect for the two of us because men who are toxic when they have a boundary put up against them, they go ape shit and they start to say the most horrible things about you possible. And our oh goal God. in her book is to let you know that a woman or man, I mean, it could be anybody, who puts up a boundary with you because you are toxic in their life is not a bitch. They're not a bitch. You're an asshole and you need a boundary. That's the reality. I'm so excited to talk about this, actually, because, yeah. Yeah. all right, so, you know, I'm, I'm a little batshit, and men like to use that against me. However, I have come to find out that men are way more batshit than me. Like, there's, like, not even a comparison, and you can't use that against me. Like, you can't take my faults and use them against me when you've got a fucking plethora of faults that, you know, I could use against you. But I don't. Totally. And, and but that's, that's, the, that's the characteristic of somebody who is ill. I mean, the word narcissist is thrown around totally loosely. There are oh, not as no, many. It's not there are not as many. I think that that's actually quite accurate. No, as a therapist, I can tell you that narcissistic personality disorder is different than a person who is acting from trauma or acting from some other deep seated issue that's not a, a psychological condition. So it gets thrown around a lot because narcissistic because there's there's narcissistic there's narcissistic personality disorder and then just like anything like anything you could be depressed for 2 weeks but you don't have a depressive disorder so there's a difference so somebody who True has story. fine you know, like so like th that being said we deal with those kind of people and they will make you crazy. They use gaslighting to get out of it because they don't want to look at themselves. They don't want to say, yeah, man, like I fucked that up I'm, and I shouldn't have done that to you. And I'm sorry. It turns into, well, you're crazy or you did this or they will push your buttons until you go spinning head, head spinning around, which is what my experience was in my last relationship was like, I'm pretty fucking even keeled. I put up with a lot of shit and I try so hard because I just want peace. I can't live I without know. you are just so more like you're more content at being peaceful than I am because yeah, I and I will give parts of me to have peace. But when I come to a person and ask for help to get that peace, and the first thing that happens is that it's thrown something is thrown back. Me. I'm gaslit. Exactly. Like I need help with such and such. Yeah, well, you started yelling. And it's like, no, I started no, yelling I because you denied you everything I said. It's like exactly. But that's the thing. And so then and then what happens? You're screaming like a banshee. 
and they're in their nice even tone going, well, I'm not yelling at you. And it's like, yeah, you're not because you don't so, care. You're playing a game. You know, I'm not. You're maintaining that you want me to be crazy. That's what it really boils down well, to. Because they're playing a game. Yeah. I'm not playing a game. I'm you're not playing, playing a game, game either. Like, right. Who the fuck is playing a game? We're fucking that funny, bro. Person, that you person is playing, playing a, game. a game. They're using chess pieces and we're using our hearts so they know that they can gaslight us. So this is what happens to me, okay? And like, I'm gonna full disclosure. I mean, I'm in a I'm in a situation because I have a daughter, and shit's toxic, and I'm not allowing that into my kid's life anymore. And I used to think that women who kept their kids away from, or men, I mean, men do it too. Parents who kept their kids away from the other parent, there was something wrong with them. But now that I am that person, I completely freaking understand. We don't know that whole story. And if somebody is toxic, they don't belong in your life. And they sure as fuck don't belong in your kid's oh life. So can we discuss, like, this doesn't just, hold on, I have to plug my phone in. This doesn't just include, like, toxic people that you're dating. Mm -hmm. It includes toxicity in your life. Yeah. And I just caught, like, it's such a weird time for me because I caught, like, a bunch of people out that were super toxic for me. And I'm having a hard time with it because I miss those people and the good things that they brought to my life. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they, they did not all, they didn't bring all bad because if they did, I wouldn't have been friends with them. But nice. now, like, the toxicity, like, is just so bad that fuck that. Like, I really don't want to deal with it. Anything toxic, I'm pushing against. And it's been fucking hard. It's hard. Yeah. It's hard cutting that out of your life. It is. Not to get too serious, but it really yeah. is really hard to cut that out of your life. Especially when you're a good person who likes to believe in the good of other people. There are plenty of people walking this earth that will, they, they'll just walk around and go, snip, you're gone. And they don't care. Like, because their standards are up here. They don't give a shit. If you don't meet the standards, they're gone. I'm not well, that person. You're not that person. I'm not we the, love to see the I, good in people. I'll, I will joke around about, like, um... If you've ever seen it, like, okay, so people have compared me to Morticia. What? No, <laughs> not me. But, like, when she's walking down the, like, Angelica Houston is, like, walking with Gomez. And she's snipping roses, like, me cutting people out of my life. There was, like, this meme. And I'm like... That is me. That is me. It really is. But there are people that I have an affection for that mm. it makes it hard to, like, snip people out of your fucking life, man. Like, I'm dealing with a lot of change. And it's not a bad change. It's just a change. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Change is, change is, is the only thing that's constant. I mean, and not to be cliche, but it is like no, the only so thing true. you count on is that things are going to change. And if things are not changing, it's because you're in a place where you're not allowing it because life is change. That's just it. And especially and it when it comes to your own, your own shit, like when you need to buckle down and have your you know, your ducks in a row and people want to walk off with your ducks. It's like, I'm sorry, you got to go. Like, yeah, I, yeah. Like you can't, have you maybe, go. maybe you can come back, but you ain't here now. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Like, so I really thought about it and all the people that I've cut out of my life, I'm not sad about it at all. Good. Like, okay. I shouldn't say sad. I, I'm not, regretful if that makes sense that makes a lot of sense so listen i'm yeah. a counselor i love to hear all the feeling words <laughs> bye, bye, bye. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm not saying like in the sink. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. so Wait, I'm I'm very caring. We are the same. The reason why we're like besties is because we have the same heart. We don't want to throw people out in the cold that other people have thrown out in the cold, right? So like we see somebody that people don't understand or people who are just in need of some sort of help and we want to help them because we know we can. Well, by However, nature, well, yeah, it's our nature. Like right. I feel like we it's our I I do feel like to be honest with you, it's our greatest fucking weakness. Like mm. it is our greatest weakness that we want to help people. Yep. That mm -hmm. don't even want to be helped themselves, you know. That's the problem, is that we don't understand. We don't recognize when they don't want the help. Because they'll take from us. They'll take our yeah. help, but they'll take it as we're doing all the work, and they're doing none of the work. And that's, it's funny to me, like, it, it's something. Stop real, Vanessa. This is oh. supposed to be funny. No. I'm sorry, but I am the Dr. Drew. I am. <laughs> I guess I'm. I am the Doctor Drew. Adam <laughs> <laughs> I'm the Doctor Drew, and yes, that is the way it is. You know, it is. And you know what? Okay, so I'm okay with that. Like, I would rather not be a terrible person and have empathy and have feelings and. Do the right thing when I feel it deems necessary, then live my life in regret and be like, oh, maybe I could have helped that person. Me too. Probably yeah. not, but, you know. Well, and I feel like, okay, so here's the thing. Like, and I know that you know people that are like this too, and we are not those people. We are the people that if we're trying to help somebody and then they kind of like fuck us over, we're pissed or sad or hurt I or no. For like for like twelve hours, and then we're just like, well, you know, I tried to help you, you didn't want help, so fuck off. Right. There are people that will hold on to that for seven, eight, nine months, and be like, I'm always fucked over, and it's like, no, you've got to understand that what you're doing is to yourself. So yeah. if you feel like you're always totally fucked over, right. it means you're giving too much. You're giving too much without an understanding what giving is. Like giving. Is not with an expectation is of not receiving. with the expectation of receiving, and that is, I think, the lesson. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're supposed to be total cunts, right? Like our <laughs> podcast. I'm not. <laughs> I'm Gretchen. Gretchen is not a total c word, which I can't Everybody even say. Should I'm really mad. Caesar. Yeah, I'm kidding. Well, yeah, that's the worst thing she said. She's so I mad. Know, and couldn't even say, epic. yeah, she couldn't even say it out loud. She just had to like be passive aggressive. No, I'm <laughs> kidding. I was I was really just kidding. But like Yeah. No, I think I God think damn um, it, Vanessa. Yeah. Stop making this your psychology session. We're supposed to be mean. I'm, I'm gonna stop. say something completely fucking okay. horrible right now. Do it. Ready? Bring us back. Bring us back. Okay, I'm going to bring you back. We're at minute 48. Bring us back. <laughs> All right. So, my kid is here. <laughs> and guess what? What? He definitely laid like twice in my living room. And I got trapped in my bedroom because I knew he was getting laid in my living room. I can't handle it, even though I know he's an adult, <laughs> he's an adult for a long time. I can't even deal. <laughs> I can't from the other room. do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. Yeah. Welcome <laughs> oh, to having a three-one-year-old. Super fun. Oh, it's just fantastic. <sighs> I'm going to pay him back in spades tonight. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> So did that even things out for I you? I feel very Puritan about this right now. <laughs> I feel like a Puritan. Like I should have a fucking a Puritan get up because of the way I feel about what just was told. It's so gross. And my kid is so cute. Like, I mean, he he's is. a 
good looking fucking kid. He is. And he's so charming. When he needs to be charming, oh, he's on it. He's so cute. What is the worst fucking word you can use for good looking, charming? He just puts a spell on you. As... He's a handsome devil. <laughs> I've got the male version of me. No. Well, he always anyway, has the male version of you. Any topics left to discuss? Quickly? No, we we went through our That's four awesome. things. We did. We did so good this week. Yay! Okay. <laughs> so now we can talk about whatever we want for the next ten minutes. What? We can talk about whatever we want for the next ten minutes. Oh, we can. No, we're just kidding. I feel like when I tell Scarlett, I'm like, we have to do the things that we have to do first and then the things we want to do. Because <laughs> she hates that I work from home. So she'll just be like, you know what the best part is, mommy? Playing with me. And I'm like, <sighs> like, you're so persuasive, but I still have to do work. <laughs> I know, right? Like, it's like, uh... Yeah. That was like the story of my working life. Yeah. It's hard. It's so fucking hard to be it's... a single mom. I mean, it was it was harder. I feel like, okay, so here's the, I don't want to say this because I feel like this is a whole other segment, but it's say hard it, to be a single mom. Say it, say it. It's, it's hard to be a single mom, but having been a single mom and also being a mom in a relationship who functioned like a single mom, I will take single mom any day over that. I was so full of anger that I had to do everything myself when I was in a relationship that I am so much happier that I don't have that anger anymore because I don't have totally honest with you, it was really actually easier for me to be a single mom than it was for me to be in a relationship mom. We've discussed this. Yeah. Like I just want to do what I want to do. <laughs> like like no. I'm a kid in a loft bed that takes up half of her bedroom because nobody could tell me no. <laughs> Did it? <laughs> Wait, what? I bought her a bed that has a fucking slide on it, dude. There's a slide in her bedroom. It takes up half of her room. I had to put a dresser and a bookcase in the closet and take off the closet doors so that this bed would fit in her bedroom. But... I did it because that's what she wanted and nobody could tell me no that this was an absurd idea and it wasn't an absurd idea. We're all happy. <laughs> so I didn't have it's anybody to not, argue with me. I just want to say it's not an absurd idea. I would give Scarlett like the moon and <laughs> the sun and the stars. This kid was like, can we go for a walk in the cemetery when we were in NOLA? And I was like, yes, yes, we can. <laughs> She's such a good and, and she loves you so much. We have like, I, I can't show you. I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I can. No, I'm not going to show you. It's ridiculous. I'm going to move this fucking camera and camera stand. But like, it's anyway, I started decorating the walls and I have like my family sign because I'm a crafting maniac, just as you are. And like, we have our little pictures of me and you and Tony and me and you and Tony and Xander and Arena and Scarlett. And it's just like family, you know, like. We're family. I love that baby so much. Like, I she literally is. took her for a walk in the goddamn New Orleans cemetery. And she understood. Like, my favorite was that she's so compassionate. Like, her mom and she's so caring. That, like, I was like, you can't step on the graves. Because I feel like it's, you know, not appropriate. Like, you know, like... You have to stand here and we're just going to respect them and we're going to walk around it. And this mm -hmm. poor child was in her rain boots, like covered up to mud in her, I mean, hot mess express. But she's one of us. She's like, you know, like she's one of us. Like she just one really got it. And I love her so much. And she's my, the daughter I'll never have. Yes. She's. She's something else. And she is, yeah. I mean, we, everywhere we go, she wants to wear two different shoes. And I'm like, man, fuck it. Like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to argue with that. Like, it's too, you, as long as there were the right feet, I don't care. <laughs> do what you got to do. Oh, no. Oh. 
No. That's not my crayon. No, okay, it's my dog sighing. Paige, where are you at? I can hear you, but I can't see you. Oh, no. Oh, and my neighbors are going buck wild. It's amazing. Sorry. I have message. Oh, my God. So what's cool about your silence is that our my crazy neighbors are going absurd right now. Like, while it was quiet, I thought I heard Scarlet, but it was really my crazy neighbors, like, screaming and hollering and being weird. That's a whole other story for another day. Do you live what? in Craig, South Carolina? I don't I live in a really nice neighborhood and all the rest of my neighbors are amazing. And then there's just this one house where it's like somebody bought the house next door and I there felt like, always I, that one. like I should have went over there and warned them. Like, yeah, you you live next to the crazies. All right. They're, so we're going we're gonna to close it out. Yeah, we got to wrap it up. All right. Everybody, join us next Monday or maybe Tuesday because we're fucking basket cases. But I think it's Monday. I need to see. I can't even fucking see my screen. Oh, yeah. Look, there you are. Oh, and you don't have a glare if you use your phone. All right. So, come join us. We don't, we don't have a tagline. We need a tagline. We need to work on a tagline to say at the end of our broadcast. <laughs> you know, I mean, we can't come up with it right now. Vanessa's gonna come up with a tagline for the end of our broadcast because mine will be completely fucking inappropriate. Hashtag going to get laid now. Bye. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that can't be our tagline because I ain't doing it. So <laughs> all right, y'all. Thank you for watching. If you made it this far, hooray. If you made it this far, it's because we had no technical difficulties other than like maybe a random dropping of a phone. Like we did this was amazing. All there's right. no delay, there's no robot. Like, whoa. I'm so I happy. actually am very tan right now. I look super Sicilian. <laughs> you're so Regina. I'm talking about this, and you're just like, check me out. <laughs> I want to lose three pounds. <laughs> hey, though, like you look super white. You're very bright back there. Well, that's because I have one, two, three, four lights on me. I have two. Yeah, I have four like fucking spotlights on me so that I don't look like a monster. We're but anyways, coming up with our next tagline for now: hashtag plastics. Hashtag plastics. Bye, y'all. Thank you for watching. Bye.